battle to allow Hindu prayers in a, in a historic Indian mosque. Okay, apologies in advance because I don't know how to pronounce things. <laughs> Whoa, that's a giant water bottle. I want that. Okay, anyways, um, <laughs> recently the Guanvapi Mosque in the state of Uttar Pradesh in India has been disputed over whether Hindus or Muslims should have control of the site and who is allowed to pray on its premises. Historians widely agree that in the past, a Hindu temple to Lord Shiva was built at the current location of the mosque. According to historical accounts, in 1669, the Mughal emperor uh, Aurangzeb ordered the temple's destruction and the Guanwapi mosque was built atop its premises, atop the remains. Going back as far as 1991, local Hindu priests petitioned for access to the mosque, and 20 years later, this contention has been reignited. The mosque's Gia, management committee. I think it's Gyan Wapi. Gyan Wapi. Okay. Let's, let's, I'll go with that. Thank you. <laughs> um, the mosque's management committee challenged a petition to allow Hindu prayers inside of the mosque, saying it violated the Places of Worship Act, which upholds the status of all religious sites as they stood at the time of independence in 1947. In April of 2021, a videographic survey of the site was ordered after a new petition to worship was filed by five Hindu women. The survey revealed evidence of Hindu symbols and iconography and this discovery of a shivaling, shivalingam. The mosque management uh, committee countered that the shivaling was the remains of a fountain that worshippers used to wash before praying. The two sides continued to go back and forth in the courts with no clear end in sight. So I wanted to talk about this because there has been some recent developments in the court cases that have been happening. There was one that happened on the 22nd, I believe. They pushed the hearing back for another couple of days. And so it's like continuing to go back and forth. So I will lay forth the matter at hand as I understand it. Okay. Because I don't necessarily know if I have a claim about what, what is better or who's right, all that stuff. My understanding is, like I said, back in the day, there was this Hindu temple for Lord Shiva. Okay. Then, according to many historical accounts, some people dispute it. The Mughal emperor, Aurangzeb, de demolished the temple and put a mosque on top of it. And this has been here for a very long time. Now, fast forward to the 90s. In the 90s, there was the Ram... Uh, Mandir movement, which basically saw the destruction of the Barbary Masjid. And now, coming forward another 20 years, they're building a temple in its place to signify the birthplace of Lord Rama, and the mosque has had to be moved to the premises nearby. So when this happened in 1991, it is it's still in many ways like an open wound in the Indian consciousness. This Ayodhya temple versus Barbary mosque contention. Um, and so when this happened, in order to prevent more things like this happening again, um, the at the time in the 90s, the Places of Worship Act was passed. Because with the Barbary Masjid, th the contention was, this used to be a temple, this is where Lord Rama was born, th now it's a mosque, because of our Mughal or, you know, our Muslim oppressors, we're going to basically destroy this mosque and we're going to take it back as ours as a Hindu holy site, right? And basically they succeeded. But like I said, this resulted in mass death, essentially because of rioting. And so the government was like, okay, we need to get a hold on this because we have lots of places across the country where historically they could be contested like this so for the sake of trying to prevent more of this i mean just like huge controversy right and violence they did the places of worship act which says okay the status of a religious place as it stood at the time of independence we're locking that in we're going to keep it that way except there was a special exemption made for the Barbary Masjid because that was being litigated separately at the time. So they're saying, okay, if there was a masjid that used to be a temple a couple hundred thousand years ago, if it was a masjid at the time of independence, 
we're locking it in. We're keeping it a masjid, okay? Historical evidence, all this stuff aside, we're going to keep it this way. So fast forward to today. So this, this temple has been under contention for a very long time, like going back to the 90s, actually even before then. And now there has been a new petition filed by five Hindu women who according to reports I've read, do have connections to right-wing Hindu groups who are saying, we want to be granted permission to go into this special area of the Gyan, Gyan, Wapi, Wapi, shoot. <laughs> into this, into this new masjid, yeah. we want to be granted access to be able Gyan to Wapi. pray to our deities there. And invisible invisible like we we want to be granted access to be able to do this frequently actually currently the mosque already allows for hindu worshipers to come and worship within the mosque for one day out of the year and there and so now there's this huge fight over this right and a lot of this is like legal language procedural stuff that i don't understand so i'm not going to pretend to be a legal scholar where i understand the legal minutia because a lot of it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, but basically then the government is like, okay, you need to, we need to be allowed special access into these sites so we can do archeological research. And my understanding is at the moment, the government said, okay, actually the places of worship act does not apply in this case. And you need to be letting these Hindus in to come pray to their Hindu gods in your mosque. And the Muslim side came back and said, basically, we are not able, they can test it on the grounds of maintainability. They said, we would not be able to maintain or fulfill the orders of this court. And that this actually violates the Places of Worship Act that should be protected under these things, blah, blah, blah. The court has come back and said, nope, that doesn't apply. You have to be able, you have to allow this. And, um, so there's still there's still a lot of back and forth going on in the courts, but that is my understanding of where things are at nowadays. Now, part of this comes from, and this is actually very important, this fountain in part of the masjid that looks like a Shiva lingam. Now, the Muslims say this is actually Shiva's, the, Shiva's penis, in, which is Shiva's penis. Yes, so, which, if true, important. That's important. Funny. No, you have to add that. But go ahead. No, it is important because the Muslims are saying that actually this is just a fountain that we use to do our ablutions. So if it actually it is a Shiva Lingam, they've been doing their ritual cleaning in the fountain of Shiva sticks. <laughs> you have been preparing for Islamic prayers with Shiva's come. That's what you have been doing. You have been stroking <laughs> Shiva's dick to purify yourself for an Islamic prayer all these years. That's if what this you have is to do. true. Will all these prayers have been accepted? This is an important question. <laughs> um, I don't know about if Allah is pleased, but Shiva is very pleased. Yeah. So then they're going back Maybe and forth about. We have a picture of the not. fountain because I want to see actually Muslims. You have to look for everything around all your mosques in India. Anything that looks like a penis, you have to hide it before the Hindus come in there and look at it, okay? Make sure no Hindus find anything penis-looking anywhere in any of your mosques or else it will take over. But um, the, literally well, anything that's just, like, domed with a pillar is a Shiva Lingam. Like, there was this whole incident in San Francisco Golden Gate Park where there was a literally a traffic barrier that was built out of granite. It was literally just domed with um, a pyramid and it became a problem for the city of San Francisco because people started doing pilgrimages to go worship a traffic barrier. This is what the Shiva Lingam looks like. For people who don't, don't know, this is, oh, you have this picture here too. This is supposed <laughs> to be Shiva's He's dick. looking at it like, that's my penis. <laughs> that's my penis. And that's uh, Parvati? That's Parvati's vagina, right? Yes. Parvati? Yeah. Okay. Are so the bottom know? is Parvati's vagina and the top is Shiva's penis. <clears throat> um, no, but this is actually very important. And I want to put some pieces together here. So this argument over is this fountain a Shiva Lingam and therefore proof that this is actually a Hindu temple 
is such this is so it's it's very it's very important because this argument is the argument that Nupar Sharma was having on Indian national TV when Ooh. she said the supposed derogatory comments about the Prophet Muhammad. This is what they were arguing over. And because of that argument, India found itself in the midst of a diplomatic crisis. Mm. So this is actually very consequential. You know, the whole story of the Shiva's Dick story was Shiva's Dick's burning the whole world. So you can see, even to this day, Shiva's Dick is continuing to burn the world. This is actually goes in line with it. <laughs> Wait, that's so that's such a good point. It's it's the continuation of that story. It's doing what it's supposed to do. <laughs> Get out of here. Oh my gosh. So in terms of this whole story, like I don't <clears throat> No, I don't know like where to fall on this issue. In general, there are many movements across India to basically take back mosques. And so this is an example of that, in my opinion. And this is something, I mean, that's been going on for decades, right? This isn't even necessarily anything that's new. Um, and yeah, so there, it's not... It's, it's highly politicized, obviously. But in terms of, I have no personal knowledge or to be able to say, oh, this is definitely a mosque. This isn't a Shiva Lingam. Oh, no, this is, you know, this is 100% a Hindu temple, blah, blah, blah. I, I can't be able to say these things. I do know that the temple that was destroyed and the, the one of the walls was kept and that wall became the, the Qibla wall for praying towards... Mecca, which I thought was interesting. Um, Armin, do you have any like overall opinions about this contention over like, should we be making these mosques back into Hindu temples? I just like how in the 21st century, uh, Muslims and Hindus are look are having fights over whether or not a found fountain is penis looking enough for a building to be a mosque or a temple okay this is where we at right now okay people are trying to colonize more some people are trying to colonize mars some people are looking at a fountain and deciding whether or not this is penis looking enough and killing each other over it okay that's what that's where we're at muslims and hindus congratulations this is what this is yeah, what they're, religious... they're going to be doing some carbon dating or something. And in the meantime, while this is being decided, like Muslims who still go to the mosques are completely barred from using this fountain area for doing wuzu. Okay, can somebody confirm if this is the picture of the fountain that has been like photo, photo of Shiva Ling found in Guy, um, I forgot how to pronounce this. Gyan Vapi goes viral. Mosque lawyer says it's a fountain. So like there, the mosque is like this, dude, this is just a fountain where we used to pray. And look, they're like, the Hindus are like, but if you zoom in, there's a tip. There's a tip of a penis. <laughs> like zoom in. And like, oh, like this picture has been <laughs> leaked. And like, enhance. Oh, what is that? <laughs> That's our Lord's penis right in the middle of your fountain got you muslims we got you <laughs> it's our temple now this is our temple oh now. my god i can't <laughs> stand you <laughs> no oh i can god. one thing i appreciate is both of our hindutva members or supporters in our chat are saying i don't know why hindus are going for the shiva lingam debate better to go with archaeological survey or historical records and that's also stupid though yeah, it's also stupid. Like, oh, ancient history. Like, let's decide things that happened hundreds and thousands of years ago has relevancy today. Let's kill each other and uh, over it. Fantastic idea. Sure. By the way, YouTube, I'm being sarcastic. I don't want anybody yeah. to kill anybody. Yeah. I think when Hara Sultan talks about civilizational dogma, that's a really good way of putting it. Like, how we treat people today being dictated by historical grievance. 
I don't know. Wait. It's something I really can't comprehend. This is a shake, shaky in the live chat has a great counter. Has a great counter by the Muslims. It's a circumcised penis. It's a circumcised penis. Last time I checked, Hindus don't get circumcised. Okay? It's a lost penis. This is not Shiva's penis. This is a lost penis. We have been washing, we have been puring, purifying ourselves for prayer with a lost penis, not Shiva's penis, because it's circumcised. Is Allah circumcised? I think Allah would be circumcised. You know, these are good questions. <laughs> got him. Got him. Got him. <laughs> yes. This is a bad lawyers, Muslim lawyers. You have to tell the Hindus that there's no way that this is a Shiva Lingam. It's circumcised. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Wait, let's look at let's read some. I have start some comments. Tell me if you want to read any of them. Okay. Wait, let me yeah. look quickly. Well, maybe it's erect. Um uh ba, 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 ba. Hey, if any some of these things are like regarding things that I can't speak to, so I don't know if it's, um <laughs> Wait, you're right actually. Uh. Asian American is saying, can we get Shiva some lube? That dick looks cracked. <laughs> Oh, no. I cannot stand our live chat. <laughs> I love you guys. It's too irreverent. It's crazy. Oh my god. The stuff you come up with. Oh my god. But are you guys not embarrassed? Like, are you not guys, like? Is this your con contribution to the civilized world? Like, no matter what side of the debate you of this discussion you are, the fact that you're taking any side should be should be a should be a source of embarrassment. The fact that you're any side of this discussion, the fact that this is your contribution to the civilized world. Look, look how far everybody is moving past you and look at what you're talking about. Whether you're Hindu and you're supporting one side or a Muslim or supporting the other side, both of you are embarrassing to the human race. God damn, Armin. Yeah, you're embarrassing us. Like, seriously, like, I'm, I'm, ho I'm hoping there's no aliens watching us because you are embarrassing all of us. God damn! This is why we can't have nice things. And I'm and, I, and again, about the priorities. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, <clears throat> just I'm embarrassed on behalf of you guys. If you're not embarrassed, I will be embarrassed on behalf of you. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's just culture war. It's culture war BS. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.